spirit and in truth, O oh God. Lord, even for our viewing audience this evening, O oh God, wherever they may be out there in the world, even in Trinidad, O oh God, we pray that they're journeying mercies right now and for that they're viewing, O oh God, that they will be blessed this evening, O oh God. They would not be disappointed by your word, O oh Jesus, which will be uttered by your servant. In your holy and your precious name, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Praise the Lord. Welcome to our national and international audience. We pray you will join you with us have and have a grand time in the presence of the Lord this evening. Amen. Hallelujah. We know that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life this evening. And there is no other God beside our Lord and Savior who came into this world to save our souls so that we can worship him and praise him in the beauty of holiness and in spirit and in truth this evening. We know that he is worthy. Amen. Hallelujah. Worthy, you are worthy, King of kings, Lord of lords, you are worthy, worthy, you are worthy, King of kings, Lord of lords, I worship you. 
Hallelujah. Just welcome the person next to you and just hug them, kiss them, and love them tonight. Amen. It's a joy and a privilege to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. So that we can gather in this holy convocation and we can fellowship one with the other to worship our Lord and Savior. He is more precious this evening. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, you are more precious than silver.
fall afresh on us this evening. Hallelujah. Only you can make us whole. Only you can give us strength and make us grow spiritually in you. So we want you to come, Holy Spirit, and fall afresh on us this evening. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We praise you. We adore you. We embrace you in our lives, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Come, Holy Spirit, fall afresh on me.
Lord. Yes, Father, we thank you. Let the rain of your presence fall on me. Let your presence be with us. Everywhere. Dwell with us, Lord. Every day. Let your presence fall. Rain. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. Rain on me. Jesus. Rain on Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Rain on me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for your love and your presence. We thank you for sending your spirit, Lord. We thank you for your presence reigning in us, Lord. Keeping us every day. Keeping our mind in perfect, minds in perfect peace. Lord, thank you for giving us that rest. That rest that we can find only in you but we do not have to labor Jesus already finished the work we find rest and peace and comfort and joy liberty in your presence help us to continue to acknowledge your presence every day and oh Lord as I stand before your people again tonight not in my own strength or own power, but by your Spirit. Give us wisdom, knowledge, and spiritual understanding as we leap forward to bring glory to your kingdom, to bring liberty to the captive, to bring deliverance to people that are in need teach us Lord teach us tonight what we need to know one of the most important needs in the church today help us to understand what is needful that we can be a part of your plan in these last days use us Lord use us mightily let your spirit take control of our lives and give us direction we come before you Lord with a sense of knowing a sense of knowledge of the provision you have made for us to seek you for direction to utilize the gifts that are within us to use the potential you have blessed us with to make things happen in the lives of people. Help us to be a part of what you're doing in these last days, Lord. And everything you have blessed us with, we may use it for your own and for your glory. Teach us tonight. Show us the way. I pray in Jesus' name. And the people said, Amen. And Amen. Turn around, greet somebody tonight, and let them know you appreciate their presence tonight. And for those of you who are tuning in, God bless you. Thank you for tuning in again to this broadcast. And I trust that the Lord will give your word tonight, will bless you and challenge you to move forward and let your life bring glory to God and as you shine for His honor and for glory. That you will speak to your situations and bring things to pass that you desire and God wills for your life. Tonight, we just appreciate you. God bless you. Let's put our hands together and welcome those watching tonight, wherever you are. God bless you real good. Stay tuned. The Lord has a word for you tonight. Amen. Pleasant good, good evening to you, church. And pleasant good evening, church. And uh, good to be back in the presence of the Lord tonight in our midweek service. Good to have you with us. And we're going to go right into the word of God tonight. How many are having a good week? How many are blessed to be alive tonight? Thank you, Jesus. How many appreciate the Lord ministering to you uh, this past weekend, giving you food for your soul to keep you abreast of what he's doing and for you to bring victory to your life every day how many appreciate god's word amen praise the lord
How many, how many of you are in, in talking terms tonight? Amen. Can you just say amen tonight? Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask you that. Huh? Can you just say amen tonight? Amen. Praise the Lord. Turn to someone and just give them a 30 seconds testimony. Could you do that? 30 seconds testimony. Can you share 30 seconds testimony? Hallelujah. God has been doing so many things for you. And I sure you can. It's like an ad on television or so. 30 seconds, they can say a thousand things if they want to. And they do. You can say a lot for the Lord in 30 seconds. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. It's all about glorifying God. It's all about glorifying God. You know, we take courage in the Lord. I said we take courage in the Lord. You know, our strength is in Him. We, everything we need in this life to give us courage and strength to move forward, we can only find it in the Lord. There is a place, there is a place that God has designed where you can go and be rejuvenated. Rejuvenated. Amen? All right, you have your Bibles? How many of you remember what the Lord told us on Sunday night? What the Lord said Sunday night? Hmm? What was the topic Sunday night? Speak it loud. <laughs> Ministering to your circumstances or prophesying to your circumstances or speaking to your circumstances or commanding your circumstances. You know, and tonight, what are we going to be talking about tonight? The ministry of deliverance. Say it after me. The ministry of deliverance. Can you think of somebody right now that needs deliverance? How many of you can think of somebody right now that needs deliverance? Deliverance is a ministry that God has given to every believer. See, I am a believer. And I have been given the ministry of deliverance. That is not something special some particular person must have. Every one of us have been given the ministry of deliverance. And tonight I'm going to show you how to operate in the ministry of deliverance. Some of you want that tonight. Praise the Lord. We are, we are still in that same context of warring a good warfare. And when dealing with deliverance, you want to deliver people from spiritual bondage because spiritual bondage will take you into physical bondage are you listening and so we still in that um, situation of or still in that realm of understanding how we need to war a good warfare and we spoke about putting on the whole armor of god on sunday morning and talking about the the different peers of uh of of, of weapons that we must wear and how many remember that? You know, truth and righteousness. What's the other two? Hmm? Truth and righteousness. Peace and what? Faith and salvation and the word. And then you're going to prayer to get direction to exhibit the power of God or demonstrate the power of God. And Sunday night is just about speaking to your circumstance. So I trust that you have all that in your mind. And now we're going to go into the book of Acts, chapter 3. And we're going to talk about minis the ministry of deliverance. The ministry of deliverance. Ministry in the supernatural. How many would like God to use you in the supernatural realm? Now, now remember this. You know, some Christians, some, in fact, many people are in church and they need deliverance. Now, a person can get saved, and even though you're saved and you're going to church, you still need deliverance from certain habits and certain things that you have been um, in bondage to. Salvation is one thing, and then you need deliverance from certain things. And some people are in church for years and still need deliverance. And if you want to minister uh, deliverance to other people, you first have to be? delivered good you're smart 
So the key in the ministry of deliverance is a relationship with the Holy Spirit. We just sang that song, that last song. How many enjoy that song? The, the reign of your presence. What it says? Fall on me. The reign of your presence. And the words are very important in that song. As we sang it, I said it goes well with my message. Because the key to the ministry of deliverance is your relationship with the Holy Spirit. What happens as we walk in the Spirit, as we walk in the supernatural, or we walk in the Spirit, we minister in the supernatural. If you're in the Spirit, you will operate in the Spirit. Now, Peter and John uh, were approaching the, 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 the temple to pray, and they reached at the gate of the temple, and, and something happened. Let's look at Acts chapter 3, verse 1, and read from verse 1 to 8. He said, Now Peter and John went up to, together into the temple, uh, at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour. You now they went up together into the temple. They were going to church or going to the synagogue. And a certain man lame uh, from his mother's womb was, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms and then, and of them that entered into the temple, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms, and Peter fastening his eyes upon him, with John said, look on us. And I'm going to deal with that word fasting because it has a lot to do with what, how we operate. Okay? That word fasting. And he gave heed to them. And he gave heed to them expecting to receive something of them. This is why I say unsafe people receive miracles faster than Christians in church. Because they have a spirit of expectancy. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bone received strength. And he leaping, and he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple. Notice he started going to church too. Immediately. That's good. Walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was that he who has sat by the gate. Now, we're talking about the ministry of deliverance. And here we see Peter and John walking in the Spirit. As they were walking in the Spirit, they were able to uh, manipulate the works of darkness. And they were able to minister in the supernatural. And they were in agreement. When we come to church, we must be in agreement. When we go into on the Lord's business, when you're going to do the Lord's business, we must be in agreement. Now, Jesus, the Bible tells us, Jesus' uh, ministry was a ministry of miracles. Now, I want you to notice something. While Jesus was walking the earth, his ministry, he ministered as a man under the anointing. Okay? As a man under the anointing and... Uh, and if he had not the anointing, he could not have done it. To show you and I that when we walk under the same anointing, we can do the same work and greater. The greater is not in the quality of the work, but is in the quantity of work. Because Jesus was limited. There's only one person. Could have been one place, one place at, at, at a time. Okay? Because as a man, he could only be one place at a time. As the son of God now, he can be anywhere. But at the time he walked the earth, he could have only been one place at a time. But the Holy Spirit was on him, and he could have discerned and a lot of things that, that you, know, you cannot do outside of the, the realm of the Spirit of God. Are you listening to me? Now, you see how important it is for you to operate in the Spirit wherever you are, on your job, working, uh, home, anywhere. You operate in the Spirit, and you have that mind. So Jesus' ministry was a ministry of miracles as he operated. Acts chapter 10, verse 38 tells us, everywhere he went, the Bible says, God anointed him, this Jesus of Nazareth, with the Holy Ghost. Notice that. Anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power. How many want that? The same anointing is available for you and for me. With, who went about doing good. This is what God wants you to do. And healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Notice who is responsible for oppression. Who? All that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him him being a man god was with 
him. Now, now his miracles, Jesus' miracles were not a result, was not a result of his being of him, him being the Son of God, but rather they were the result of his relationship with the Holy Spirit. Do you understand that? Again, his miracles was not because he was the Son of God, because he will give us a disadvantage. But his miracle was as a result of his relationship with the Holy Spirit. Because he said in Luke 14, 18, look what he says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me to what? To heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives. When you witness to somebody, you are preaching deliverance. To preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind and set the liberty them that are bruised. That's both physically and spiritually. Do you understand that? You see, when you are set free spiritually, you'll come out of physical bondage. Okay? So he was operating, as he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me as a man, for example. To give us an example, to exemplify what we can do. So he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me uh, to proclaim that captives will be released. To proclaim the, the gospel so that captive, captives can be released. So we have, we have the power to release the captive. We need the anointing to use the power. What is the power? The power is in the word. The word, the gospel. Amen. In other words, you have the authority to use the gospel. The gospel process is the power of God unto salvation. And you are authorized to use the gospel. The anointing of God is upon you to preach the gospel. Amen? So all miracles are directly the result of the moving of the Holy Spirit. No Holy Spirit, no miracles. Get that straight. No Holy Spirit, no miracles. Amen. In churches that doesn't believe, the church, the, the church that doesn't believe in the Holy Spirit, all they have is just a ritual operation and no, 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 no manifestation of the Spirit of God. Now, now, but the Bible tells us the Holy Spirit is the one that moves. He moves upon the formless earth. And guess what happened? The, uh, the, the, the earth was created. Planets were created. The universe was formed. He moved upon uh, 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 um, um, legless men. And they started walking. You see, God cannot do anything unless the Holy Spirit moves first. You see, even when, the, when chaos was upon the face of the earth, the Bible tells us the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the deep, the Spirit, face of the waters, because the entire earth was covered with water as a result of the judgment upon Lucifer when he fell and became Satan. The whole world was covered with water. The whole earth was covered with water. And there was no place for him to rest, so he was in the darkness, and he was known as a prince of the powers of darkness. The Spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the deep, and as the Spirit of God moved, there was light. God said, let there be light, and there was light. So God worked after the Spirit of God moved. Amen. So we need to get the Spirit of God moving. Can you say amen? He moved upon the formless earth and created the planets and, and mankind. And then again, in the third chapter of Acts, we see he moved upon uh, useless legs of this man and brought resurrection power onto them. Notice, 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 everywhere he went, he was what? Doing good. Now, how about your ministry of miracles? You say, well, that is only for special people. No, no, no. The anointing. You see, it's not, it's not, it's not a man's gift. It's not a man's gift. It's, it's the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And God can use anybody to get the job done that is anointed. So if, you, if, if it was just special people, then we, we, have to, we have to depend on certain people. But God wants you to know that He wants to anoint you. Amen. So you have to believe God to use you and believe God for the anointing, and believe in the anointing, believe in the power of the Holy Spirit, and believe God can use you not only to receive your miracle, but to speak deliverance to those who need. So the same Holy Spirit who used Jesus also used Peter and John, 
See, his desire is to use you in the miraculous power of God. That's the desire of God to use you or the desire of the Holy Spirit to use you. And he wants, he wants a vessel to use. Amen. So your greatest purpose in life is to allow the Holy Spirit to use you in the miraculous to help others. Amen. God wants you to fix yourself. Fix yourself. You cannot spend all your life fixing yourself. You have to fix yourself and maintain yourself. Maintain it. In the process, you do the will of God. Ministering to others. Amen. So this is why you have to learn how to operate. Apply and, 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 and do unto others. Peter said, I give you what I have to this man. He said to the man, I give you what I have in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Acts, verse 3, Acts 3, 6. He said, he said, silver and gold have I none. In other words, I'll give you what I have. What I have is the name of Jesus. Power to use the name of Jesus. You see? The authority to use the name of Jesus. And I'll show you how important it is in a minute. So here he said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. Get up and walk. Rise up and walk. Notice he made a command, and we'll come back to that. Now, when ministering in the supernatural, there are five things I want you to write down tonight because there are five things you need to understand tonight. Five things you need to understand when you're operating in the supernatural. Now, how many of you really want to receive this tonight? How many really want God to use it tonight? On your job, wherever you are, five things you need to know. Number one, you must surrender your body to be used by the Spirit of God. You must surrender your body to be used by the Spirit of God. Because you know what? The Spirit of God, He wants a temple to dwell in. And He wants a temple that He can operate. In. So you must surrender. Look, look at uh, chapter, chapter 3, verse 1. Now Peter and John went up to the, together into the temple. So they were surrendered. They were, they were in the presence of God. They were, they were ready. They were saturated. They were, they were tuned in. You see? And you see, they, they were not coming to church just to, to get in the presence of God. They were coming to church with the presence of God. Very important. They were coming to church with the presence of God, under the anointing, under the inspiration, and they were coming under that inspiration to pray. Amen? Amen? Being the ninth hour. So, Paul said in 1 Corinthians 6 19, he said, your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Don't you know, don't you know that? Your body is a dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. He said, know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, which, which is in you, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own? You see, because you were purchased with a price. You were bought and paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ. So the Holy Spirit is looking for a body through which he, uh, which he can express himself or manifest his power. And he wants to use you tonight. You remember Moses? Moses was full of the presence of God to the point where the, when, he, when his, his face shone so brightly that the children of Israel could not look upon the, the, the radiance on his face. Mm, they couldn't, couldn't look at it. Remember the Apostle Paul too? The Bible said he carried the presence in his body to the point where he exhibited the power, the manifestation of God, and the, under the anointing, they took his handkerchief and his apron and they went other places and prayed for people and they got healed because the anointing was upon him. And the point of contact, the, the tangible anointing. No, 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 no. That's what you call a tangible anointing that was, that, that was extended through the handkerchief and aprons. You see? And so everything that you touch, man, everything you touch, everything that is on you, 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 you are totally anointed. Amen. So it's important for you to understand that, okay? So in the Old Testament, God did, didn't dwell in, in man as he is dwelling today. In the Old Testament, God dwells in the Holy of Holies. And the only person who could have gone into the presence of God was the high priest. And he couldn't go there unless he made an atonement through the blood of the sacrifice of the animal. And, the, and you know how, the, and, and in order to make atonement for, this, for the sins of the nation, they had to bring the animals and then lay their hands on the head, and then the sin will, the sin will transfer to the animal, and the purity of the animal will transfer. It's a transference, which is a type of the righteousness of Christ in us and our sins upon him. And then they will take the animal and sacrifice it, sacrifice it and take the blood and pour it on the mercy seat between the two cherubims, which were like the eyes of God. And when God sees the blood, 
when he sees the blood, he forgives them and he healed them and delivered them and they were good for another year. Isn't God an awesome God? So, well, God dwells in the Holy of Holies. Then he used to dwell in the Holy of Holies. Now he needs your body. I said, now he needs your body. And you have to understand that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. So you should recognize that your body is God's temple. Your body is a walking holy of holies. Can you see that tonight? Now I'm, I'm, I'm speaking, I'm teaching you this, but could, could you really believe this tonight? Will you believe this tonight? Your body is the walking holy of Holies, because if God dwells there and He dwells in the holy place and holy of holies, your body, your temple, is the holy of holies. You see, if you don't believe it, you will you will negate the purpose. If you don't believe it, you will nullify the purpose. If you don't believe it and don't understand it, you wouldn't you wouldn't accept it, and you wouldn't have that your mind conditioned with that pers- perspective. You see. But you condition your mind. So you're conscious of the fact that the Holy Ghost is in you. The Holy of Holies is in you. God sets up His throne in your heart. Hallelujah. In your heart. Aren't you glad for that? So that is why you must keep your body pure and unpolluted, sanctified as the priest, as that of a priest in the Old Testament. Because God dwells in you. Now when the Holy Spirit is in you, <laughs> you realize that, that what you do is not by might, not by your power, but by His Spirit. Right? Peter's very shadow was used to heal the sick in Acts chapter 5. 